All right, praise God. Yes, Lord. Listen, this is a season of miracles, amen? I said this is a season of miracles. Uh, you know, as we've been celebrating the birth of Jesus, amen, we know Jesus was not born December 25th, that we know. Most likely he was born around September or so. But, you know, we, we remember his birth, amen. Listen, the incarnation is the greatest miracle that has ever happened. You know, the incarnation. I'm not talking about the incarnation. Is that of some coffee or something? Encarnacion? What is that? No, what is it called? Come on, help me. Thank you. Incar incar incarnation milk. Oh, I'm talking about the incarnation of Christ. God became man. Hello? That's the greatest miracle. That God became man. In, in 2 Timothy 3.16 says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. I'll say it again. They didn't hear it. It said, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. So for the first time in history, God became man. Jesus always existed, but he took on the form of flesh 2,000 years ago. In the Old Testament, we had theophanies. Everyone say theophanies. Theophanies are appearances of God where Jesus would appear. Yeah, in the Old Testament, will appear to men. He will come and he will go. He will make a manifestation and appearance as the glory of God. And they will see him, but then he will leave. So, but 2,000 years ago, Jesus, for the first time, God took on flesh for the first time. Listen, when, when we talk about God becoming man, God is spirit, the Bible says. Okay? He doesn't have a physical body. He has a spiritual body. Now, because God has a spiritual body, it doesn't mean he's formless. Because people think of a spirit that has no form. No, no, no. Your spirit man on the inside of you has a form. How many ever seen the movie Ghost? With Whoopi and, and Patrick and, and Demi and, and all these people. What happened in that, in that movie scene? You will see the spirit come out, right? Okay, but the spirit had a form. Yes or no? It wasn't formless. Eyes, hands, feet. So God is spirit. The Bible says that they have seen God in vision. In the book of Revelation, John saw someone sitting on a throne. In the Old Testament, Daniel saw sit someone sitting on a throne. In Ezekiel, they said that they saw the throne of room of God and God sitting. So God has a body, a spiritual body. Hands, feet, arms, and legs. Are you with me? Sitting on a throne. But 2,000 years ago, God became man. God took flesh for the first time 2,000 years ago. And that is the greatest miracle that ever happened. Amen. Not the creation of the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in it. The greatest miracle is that the unlimited God became a limited man. That the unseen God became the seen man. Where you can see him. The invisible one became visible for the first time. And they saw him. The word became flesh. John 1.14. The word became flesh and dwelt how? Among us. And we beheld his glory. They saw his glory. And he walked the earth 33 years. He didn't come and go like the Old Testament. Where he will appear and leave. He came and dwelt among us. And John, in, third, in 1 John, it says, and we touch them. We handle him, him concerning the word of life. We touch them. We saw him. We ate with him. So God became man, the greatest miracle. You know what's the second greatest miracle? That the sons of men have become sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The two greatest miracles. God became man. God became the son of man. That the son of men may become sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's, that's the two greatest miracles. Praise God. So in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, there's a prophecy by the prophet Isaiah. And he prophesies. This is 700 years before the birth of Christ on earth. 700, year, 700 years prior, the prophet prophesies. And he says in Isaiah 7 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. 
Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And you see that in the book of Matthew chapter 2, that Matthew says this was done to fulfill the prophecy of the book of Isaiah. So here we see Isaiah 700 years. How many years? Before the birth of Christ, prophesies a virgin shall conceive a what? Son, and his name shall be called what? Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means God with us. That God came to dwell with us. That God came to tabernacle among us. In the Old Testament, God will tabernacle amongst men. Moses builds the tabernacle. And God will come and dwell in that tabernacle. His glory would be manifested in that tabernacle. But it will come and it will what? Go. And here's the word, Emmanuel, God, coming in the form of flesh and dwelling among us. Now, God dwelling among us or with us is awesome. It's powerful. But you know what's greater than that? God dwelling in us. In the old covenant, he dwelt with us. After the cross and the resurrection, God has come to live in us. Someone shout hallelujah. Which is greater, God dwelling with you or God dwelling in you? So he who was with us took permanent residence and dwelt in us. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You better think about that and meditate on that because that's too big for your little brain. That the unlimited God dwells in limited man. You got to be kidding me. Flesh and bone and this unlimited God dwells on the inside of us. I mean, you better think about that for a second. God dwells in you. I'll say it again. God dwells in you. I said God dwells in you. Lives in you permanently. Hallelujah. Not temporarily. Permanently. Permanent residence on the inside of you and I. Every believer. Not every person. Every believer. For John chapter 1 says, as many as received him. To those people that received them, he gave them the right or the authority to become sons of God. To those who believe in his name. So those who believe in him and what he did on the cross and believe in his name, what happens? You become a son of God. God gives you the power to become sons of God. And what happens? When the day you receive Christ, hallelujah. Like my brother Christopher a couple of weeks ago. The day he received Christ right here, what happened? The Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of him. The Holy Spirit was not there prior. Once you said, Jesus, come into my heart, the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of him. And he became a born again man of God. Hallelujah. A son of God. So what happens when you're saved? The Holy Spirit comes to live inside your spirit man. He recreates and gives life to your spirit. Because you and I are three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. So the day you got saved, your spirit on the inside of you, which was dead prior to Christ, it didn't have the life of God. You existed as a man, but you weren't living as a man. Meaning you existed, you were breathing physically, but you didn't have spiritual life on the inside of you until the Holy Spirit, who's the spirit of life, came to live on the inside of you. Then life came on the inside of you. And for the first time in your life, you experienced true life. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit came to live on the inside of you. Who's the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Father, and the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. So when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Spirit of the Father. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Spirit of Christ. That means the whole Godhead dwells in you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live on the inside of you. That's big. That's a big boy right there. That's a big thing that took place on the inside of you. That the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God live inside your spirit. 
Jesus did not come in you physically. His foot didn't come in, then his arm and his legs. No, spiritually, he came to live on the inside of you. And the amazing thing is that he lives in every believer all at once and at the same time. Now, you try to figure that out with your little educated brain. You can't figure it out. These are spiritual matters, spiritual things. God, who's three in one, is one in three also. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. But one God and three persons at the same time. Three manifestations. The Godhead is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they all three are one. But at the same time, it's one and in three manifestations. I know our little brains can't figure that out. When we get to heaven, we'll understand a little bit better. Hallelujah. Now, God with us, Emmanuel, he comes to dwell with us. But why? Because he was born to dwell with us. But he died to live in us. Jesus was born physically to dwell among us. But when he died on that cross and was raised from the dead, he told the apostles in John chapter 20, verse 22, receive the Holy Spirit. And he was warning them. He says, listen, I'm with you now, but later on, I'm going to be in you. Prior to that, he was not in them. He was with them. But to have him with, have Jesus with you is one thing, but to have him in you is another thing. To have him in you is greater than just having him with you. Hallelujah. Now. So Emmanuel comes down, God with us, God with man to take permanent residence on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Now, in Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So Paul makes the declaration, Christ lives in me. Now, it's not just some uh, religious saying. Jesus actually lives in you. Think about that. That the Son of God lives in you. In 2 Corinthians 13, 15, he says, Do you not yourselves know that Jesus Christ is in you? He's telling the Corinthian church, Come on, guys. Live up to the standard of God. Jesus Christ lives in you. He's reminding them, Don't forget who's on the inside of you. God is in you. So when you're thinking about going to drink, remember, Jesus is in you. When you're thinking about doing some uh, sexual immorality, remember, Jesus is in you. Hello? Am I getting some people's attention now? Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus is in you. You can't understand it here. You need revelation to understand it here. The Holy Spirit will reveal these truths to us. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 19, he says, oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So your body is the temple where the Spirit of God dwells. Listen, the Jewish people have not been able to worship in the temple for 2,000 years. Remember when Jesus would enter the temple 2,000 years ago? That temple doesn't exist anymore. It was completely destroyed and burned in 70 AD by the Romans. That's why the Jewish people are not uh, worshiping in one temple no more. They have synagogues, but there's no animal sacrificial system anymore because there's no temple. There's plans to rebuild that temple. And, and they've been having those plans for many years. But Paul's talking about, forget about a building, brother. God lives in you. You are the temple. And anywhere you go... God goes. Hello? I said wherever you go, God goes. When Millie prayed that prayer in that home, what happened? God was there. God was there because God was in her and God manifested himself to the people that were there. Amen? So you are the temple of God. You are the carrier of the glory of God. Wherever you go, the glory goes. Amen? Now, in Colossians chapter 1, and I want you to read that for yourself now. Colossians chapter 1. Are you guys enjoying this? Am I going too fast? Okay. Colossians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. How many want to be transformed? Some people only. I say, how many want to be transformed? We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from grace to grace. 
one level to another level. Ain't you tired of being on the same level? We want to grow to another level. Amen. Now, Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. It says, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. So there was a mystery that was hidden. Now, God doesn't hide things from you. God hides things for you. Are you with me? So this mystery that Jew and Gentile were called to be saved was hidden. The Jewish people thought salvation was only for them. Though the prophets were declaring that Gentiles were going to come, they couldn't see that truth. They thought salvation was only for the Jew. But then by the Holy Spirit and through the preaching of the apostles, the revelation came. <gasps> wow, Salvation is for the Gentiles, for the Dominicano, for the Puerto Rican, for the Cubano, for the Colombian, for the African, for the Asian. The gospel is for everyone and God wants to dwell in every man from every nation and every tribe. So this mystery was hidden and it was revealed by the Spirit through preaching. And what happens? God revealed this. Verse 27. To them God willed or desire. To make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is what? The hope of glory. So once Christ came to live on the inside of you, there was a seed planted. There was an expectation for hope. Speaks of expectation. There was an expectation of living a life of glory. Are you with me? So Christ in you is the beginning of the journey. Not the end. You know what's the end? I'll tell you in a second. Christ in you begins your Christian walk. Begins this glorious walk. Okay? Christ in you. But you in Christ, hallelujah, brings the glory. So Christ in you brings the hope of glory. But I in Christ bring the glory. Did you guys get it? I don't think you got it. Holy Spirit, help them understand what I'm saying. Christ in you is the hope of the glory, of walking in the glory. But how do you get the glory of God to manifest in your life? You have to be in Christ. Christ in me brings the hope of glory. But I in Christ manifests the glory. What does that mean? I'll tell you in a second. There's two deaths that took place. There's the death of Jesus, which caused him to come to live on the inside of you. And then there's your death. Not physical. I'm talking about spiritual. Then there's your death. And when you die, then you become in Christ. Meaning, the more you die to your flesh, the more you are in Christ. Now, in the spirit, you already, Christ is in you and you are already in Christ. But Christ in me was instant. The day I received Christ, it happened instantaneously. I was born again. But me in Christ is a process. You understand me better now? Yeah. Christ in me, instantly. I'm saved. But I in Christ takes process, takes a little while. Now, how fast you are in Christ depends on you. Hello? If you love the world, the things of the world, you're not going to want to be in Christ because you want to be in the world. You can't be in the world and in Christ at the same time. Hello? I, I mean, if someone was preaching this to me, I would have been going crazy. Christ in you... It's instant. You in Christ is a process. So when Jesus died, he died so he can be in you. And you die so you can be in him. So the more you die or the more you surrender or the more you yield to God. When you yield to God, what happens? You will manifest the glory of Christ in your life. Christ in me brings the hope of glory. But I in Christ brings the glory. So that's your final destination, spiritually speaking. Your final destination is you in Christ.
Because he's in you 100%. But you are not in him 100% because you haven't yielded 100% yet. That's good stuff right there. That's too much filet mignon, I think, for you this afternoon. You ate too much for Christmas. These concepts, people say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You don't know nothing. You only know, I'm not talking, I'm not saying to you that you don't know nothing. What I'm saying is people, people think that head knowledge is going to transform. The head knowledge don't transform you. You don't say, oh, I heard that before. Yeah, but I don't see no transformation in you. So, well, well, there's no revelation. Revelation brings transformation. So you in Christ will bring the glory of God. And that's process. And how fast you yield and how fast you surrender, how fast you trust God, that's how fast you will be in Christ. So that's your destination. My destination is I in Christ. That you be like Paul say, I no longer live. Christ lives in me. What he was saying was, I don't do what I want to do no more. I don't move wherever I want to move anymore. I only move and do and say what he tells me to do and say. Are you with me? That's a life that's totally surrendered to Jesus. And God's people said. And, that, and if people in this house, at fire at the altar and other people in other churches, if they yield to Christ Jesus, they will be manifesting the glory. And that's what's going to happen. We are in the end times where the true bride is arising. Now this bride is not here for their own plans and purposes. This bride has recognized and understand that they are here for the prophetic purposes of God. When you come to the revelation, oh, I'm not born for myself. I'm born to walk with Jesus. I didn't know that. Once you come to that revelation, then everything you do now has to do about him. It's for him. You were created for his glory. You were not created for your own glory. For by him, all things were made. They were made by him, through him, and for him. You and I were made for who? For him. For him. So my destination is I in Christ. Christ in me, instant. I in Christ, process. Takes time. As I yield, the more I yield, the more I say no to my flesh, the more I say no to my will, and I say yes to God's will, his will becomes my will. And when his will becomes my will, not just one day that you obey, this is constant. You constantly die to self. Jesus died one time forever, but you have to continually die. Paul said this, I die weekly. I die monthly. I die yearly. What did he say? I die how many times? Every day, daily. Because every day you got to say no to the flesh. Because your flesh wants to pull one way, but your spirit inside wants to go the other way. And Paul says, I find a war happening on the inside of me. One wants to pull this way and the other wants to pull that way. And you are the one in the middle. Your soul decides who you're going to yield to. You're going to yield to your flesh or you're going to yield to God. If you yield to God, you're going to walk in the glory of God. Some people are not interested in walking in glory. That's the problem here. You're... You, you, you are satisfied with a mediocre, weakless, and powerless life. I'm not. I want more. Not more of God. Because we have all of God already. I want more to give, uh, to give myself more to God. Right? It's that, Lord, give me more. Lord, I already came in 100% inside of you. But you haven't yielded 100% to me. Am I speaking or the Holy Ghost speaking this afternoon? God is saying this afternoon, you have to yield to God more than what you've been yielding to. More than what you have been yielding. Don't let fear hold you back from yielding to God. Yield to God. You're in the safest hands of the universe. Are you with me? Now, don't yield to man. Yield to God. When the Lord appeared to me and told me, yield to God, he said yield to him. He didn't say go yield to a man or yield to some woman or whatever. He said yield to God. Yield to me. And if you and I will yield to God 100%, what will God do with us? What type of glorious life will we live if we yield to God 100%? Hallelujah. But you have to have vision. Everyone say vision. Vision. What's your vision? 
Oh, I want to have a nice little life, car and a house. That's a cheap life, weak life. House, car, I could live in the flesh and get that. Hello? I see all these rock star, movie star, they got all that in the flesh. That's cheap riches. There's a greater riches that we have to obtain. Hallelujah. How many are hungry for the greater riches? The greater riches is the glory of God. Hallelujah. So that's what, as we enter in 2022, we better be hungry for the glory. Hungry to walk in His glory. Jesus died. Jesus said this in John 17. I pray that the glory that you have given me, I give it to them, He said. Jesus wants you walking in the glory that He walked in. But you can't walk in His glory if you, not, if you are not in Him. If you haven't surrendered or yielded to Him. Are you with me? The Bible says God will not share His glory. But when he's talking about God will not share his glory, meaning that you're not going to get the credit. But God wants you to participate in his glory. The Bible says in, in, in 2 Peter that we are partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Yeah. Once you got saved, you became a partaker, meaning you have taken part of the divine nature of God. Thank you, Jesus. How many are hungry for the presence of the Lord? How many are hungry for the anointing of the Lord? So Christ in me is the beginning of the journey. Hallelujah. I'm just going to keep moving through here. If you go to John chapter 14, verse 17, the Bible declares this. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. And he says, in verse 16, John 14, 16, and I'm done with this. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, the, the, that he may get, abide with you forever. I'm sorry. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So Jesus was speaking to the disciples that were in front of his face, he says, I'm going to pray that the Father send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray. But he's with you now. What do you mean he was with them? Because the Spirit of God was in Jesus. And as long as you were next to Jesus, the Holy Spirit was with you because the Spirit of God was in Christ. He, but Jesus said, I'm going to pray. When I leave the earth, physically, Jesus was saying, when I die, I'm with you, but I'm going to come and live on the inside of you. He who is with you shall be in you. And that's exactly what happened. He left the earth and he came back to be in them by the spirit of the Lord. So what am I saying with all this? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everything you need to live a successful, powerful Christian life has already been deposited on the inside of you. The same way Jesus became flesh, became a seed in the womb of Mary, Jesus physically had to grow in Mary's womb, correct? He had to grow in order to, to come forth and be born. The same way, spiritually speaking, when Christ came to live on the inside of you as a seed, is not supposed to stay as a seed. It's supposed to grow and develop. And you're supposed to grow spiritually. And Christ, the Apostle Paul said, that Christ may be formed in you. That you disappear and it only, it's only Christ. Are you with me? That's the whole goal. Christ in me. And I in Christ. And Jesus pray, was praying. And he said, Father, I'm praying that they be one like you are in me, Father, and I am in you. That they also may be one in us as we are in them. This unity of the spirit, spiritual unity. But the process of I in Christ takes time. But whatever is holding you back, stand up to your feet. Whatever is holding you back from yielding 100%, it's time to let it go. Are you with me? Yeah, let it go. Yeah, just let it go. Listen to, listen to me. Hallelujah. You could be in a church for 5, 10 years and there's no yielding. 
you can have someone that gets saved today and in, in, in two weeks they already have yielded more than the person who's been in church for five years or ten years. It has nothing to do with physical time. This is spiritual process I'm talking about. Yes, God works with time. But I have seen people that have given their lives to the Lord and these people have outgrown those who have been 20 years in church. That should not be. That should not be. But what's the, what's the difference? The one that had just given himself to the Lord yielded to the Lord faster. He just surrendered all faster. While the other ones got comfortable and playing religious games. But we are living in the end times. Are you with me? I'm up to the book of Revelation. And I've been reading the book of Revelation. And I see the things that are coming. Not nice things. We were reading uh, Revelation chapter 7. I was talking about the, the chapter 5 and 6 about the seals being released. And death and plagues and all these things. Those things are coming. But in the meantime, Jesus is coming for a glorious church. It, so there's going to be a remnant that are going to really yield to the Lord. By the help of the Spirit. Because you can't do this by yourself. I can't do this by myself. By the power of the Spirit, we're going to yield. Why? Because I in Christ will bring the glory of God. I in Christ will perform the prophetic purpose that God has in these end times. And Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. He's not coming back for a weak, defeated church. He's coming back for a glorious church. That means that there's going to be a remnant that are going to yield and God's going to use them and do great exploits through them. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's coming. Great exploits will be done through the end time church, through the end time bride. But that end time bride is a yielded bride. Thank you, Jesus. It's a yielded bride. And the Holy Spirit is asking as we are about to enter. This is the last service of 2021. Next week, 2022. This is the last service. By the help of the Spirit, you are going to yield to the Lord. If you want God to use you like never before, you have to yield to the Lord. Yielding is simple and complex at the same time. Simple because it's so easy. Complicated because you're complicated. God is not complicated. You're complicated. I'm complicated. Hallelujah. You put a small child at two years old, you put him on top of the a cabinet or on top of the, uh, the kitchen counter. Thank you. And you, you just put your hands on and you say, jump. That, that boy jumps or that girl jumps. They trust that daddy or mommy is going to grab them. So that's how we have to do it with God. Just yield, surrender, knowing that he's going to catch you. His plan for you is greater than the plan for yourself. The plan that you have for yourself. His plan are way higher. My ways are not your ways, nor my thoughts your thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts higher than your ways, says the Lord. That's Isaiah 55. The plan that you have in your head for yourself is small. The plan that God has in His head for your life is big. Are you with me? And big doesn't mean, you know, you have this amount of things or no no big in the mind of God big in the purpose of God if your purpose is to just pick up a piece of paper every day then that's fine as long as you fulfill what he has in his mind for you God you are God's dream you are God's thought before you came on earth physically God thought about you and planned your life out in his mind and heart before the foundation of the world Think about that. Before he said, let there be light, before he created anything, God already wrote in a book your life. What he had in mind for your life, he wrote it down already. In his secret board meeting between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the devil can't read what's in the book. No man has ever saw what's in the book was written for your life. So God 
thought about you God dreamed about you that's why you came into existence think about that you started as a thought of God you didn't you wasn't made oh what's that and God said what's that no he thought about you before the creation he had a plan for you before creation so as we yield to God we're gonna fulfill what's in his mind and what's in his heart are you guys listening to what I'm saying you're gonna fulfill what's in his mind and what's in his heart as you yield the purpose that he has he had for you before the foundation of the world will come to pass in the name of Jesus as you yield to God hallelujah but his plans are big for you able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or what you can think hallelujah it's a glorious life Christ in you the hope of glory lift your hands to the Lord father I just thank you Lord in the name of Jesus I pray this afternoon Lord Christ in me is the hope of glory but I in Christ will bring the glory and Lord I thank you for this season of miracles as we contemplate and remember the greatest miracle you became man that we might become sons of God